Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Creating a backup. Your computer costs you from hundreds to thousands of dollars, but the computer itself is not the most valuable part. The data on the hard disk is the most valuable part. How many hours of work did you put into creating that data? One little event like a power line spike from a lightning strike and all that work could be lost. It's a good idea to copy your data files to a removable media such as a CD or flash drive at least once a week. Windows XP Home Edition does not install the backup utility by default. You will need to install it manually. You can either install this utility from files from your Windows XP CD-ROM or the System Restore CD-ROM that came with your computer. After inserting the CD-ROM, click Start, come to our Control Panel, and go to Add or Remove Programs. In the Add and Remove Programs dialog box, click on the Add New Programs, and then click on the CD or Floppy button in the right side. This will open up the Install Program from Floppy Disk or CD-ROM box. Click the button Next. And now we will need to click on our Browse button to move to our CD-ROM. By clicking on My Computer on the panel on the left-hand side, I can see all of my computers, and I can see my CD-ROM drive and the f my Windows disk that is in it. By clicking on it, I'll find my Value Add folder. Double-clicking that will bring me to the MSFT folder. Opening that up by double-clicking, come to the NT Backup folder and double-click that. Click on NT Backup and click Open in our browse box. Now click Finish on the Run Installation Program dialog box and Windows installation will come in and install our Windows Backup. Note that it does tell us this may take several minutes. When the Windows Backup utility has finished, click the Finish button and go ahead and close Add and Remove Programs and the Control Panel. To perform a backup, click on Start from the taskbar, come to All Programs, the File Folder Accessories, System Tools, and we should find our Backup Utility. Go ahead and click on it to open up the Backup Utility Wizard. When the Backup or Restore Wizard comes up, click on the button Next, and in this screen we'll decide what we want to do. Back up our files and settings or restore our files and settings. To create a backup, make sure Backup File and Settings are selected and click Next. Here we can specify what items we would like to back up. Our choices are My Documents and Settings, which include the My Documents folders, plus Favorites, Desktops, and Cookies. We can also choose Everyone's Desktops and Settings. This includes every user on the computer's documents folders, their favorites, desktops, and cookie settings. All information on this computer includes all data on the computer and creates a system recovery disk that can be used to restore Windows in case of a major failure. This is a great option to use at least once a month to 
to make sure that if anything should happen, you have a system recovery disk to bring you back to your most recent settings. And the last option, let me choose what to back up, will take us to a dialog box where we can pick and choose which files that we would like to have backed up. We're going to leave our settings to My Documents and Settings and click Next. Next we need to choose where we want to back our information up to. Notice that 3.5 floppy A is noted in the box. Floppy disks are rarely large enough to hold most backups and should be avoided if possible. Burning or copying files to a CD is a good option if your computer has a CD writer. Another option is a flash drive. This is a small device that can be connected to your computer by a USB port and acts as an additional hard drive. Use the Browse button to navigate to the media that you want. Click Cancel if it's looking for your floppy disk and notice that it brings up our Save As dialog box. We can go anywhere on our computer to our CD-ROM drive, if we had a flash drive installed, we would see that here as well. For example's sake, I'm going to restore our file to our desktop. At the bottom of this box, under File Name, choose the name of your backup and type, click Save. Back in our Backup or Restore Wizard dialog box, we can again change the name for the backup if we'd like, or click the button Next. This is telling us that we've created the following settings. It tells us where our backup is, the date that it was created, what its contents are, and where the location is. Go ahead and click Finish. Our backup is in progress, and depending on how much items that we have selected to back up, depend on how long this process will take. When the backup is complete, you can click on Report if you would like to see a detailed report, or click on Close to finish your backup. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.